sin, toss, and hand. You do not refer to them as sin, toss, and hand. It's done with neither. Okay? Sign, cosine, and change is how we call this. Sign, cosine, and change. Now, sine, cosine, and change are three specific ratios um, in math. So let's talk about what those three specific ratios are. Just like in 3060s and 45s, each of those stuck in triangles created specific ratios. Sine, cosine, and change are specific ratios uh, here. So let's talk about those, and let's just jump right into using them and set them up correctly. Then we'll talk about using our calculator in just a couple minutes. All right, to help you out, all right, as we work through here uh, knowing sine, cosine, and tangent ratios, there's a bit of a little bit of a mnemonic device that kind of goes hand in hand with learning the trigonometry. Uh, it's pronounced Sokotoa, right here. Sokotoa. It's just kind of goes always hand in hand with the geometry class of helping you kind of remind it. One of the things I encourage you with special rights is at the top of that paper is to write out those two reference triangles. Keep remembering those. Those things aren't going to go away. And if you remember on the uh, SAT formula sheet, they do give you special rights. Did you guys see anything about trigonometry on there, about Sokotoa on there? Those are not given to you. So trig will never be given to you in terms of a formula sheet, but if you're going to do enough time over these next two or three days, you'll get some help very quickly. It's never going to leave you. As sophomores, if you are taking physics next year, again, trig, special rights, they go hand in hand. You're going to go into physics, algebra two. So everybody taking algebra two next year, two honors, I don't care what, it's going to keep calling you quite a bit. You're going to go much further with trig and special rights again next year in algebra two and free calculus and so on. All right, let's do this, boys and girls. So, Sokotoa, S for sine, C for cosine, and T for tangent. The O, H, and A all represent something specific in that right triangle. So let's label up this triangle and then create our ratios. The X is always going to represent the angle that you are standing at. The H, I'll give you one idea of what the H represents in a right triangle. What do you think the H represents in the right triangle? Imagine that. So hypotenuse is a hypotenuse, right? That's always across from the uh, from the uh, right angle, correct? Now, the O is dependent on where you are standing at at the angle. So we're standing here at this angle. The O is going to represent the opposite side. So I have two other sides here, my other legs. I'll call these A and B. Now, don't label A and B. But of the A and B, which one represents your opposite leg? A or B? A. It's all dependent on what angle you're standing at. We're standing here at X, aren't we? So that is A, your opposite leg. So let's label A as opposite. Now, why did I label that as my opposite? Because that is the first <coughs> trig ratio. The sine ratio, SOH, sine ratio is the opposite side to the hypotenuse. Okay. So our first thing has got to be knowing the ratios, and then our next thing will be actually creating the ratios. So it's always going to be the sine of the angle you're standing at is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse side. Okay, cosine. Cosine is A over H. A is, well, the other word that we've used throughout the year on triangles is the adjacent. We said adjacent is your immediate left or your immediate right. We're standing at angle X. And standing at angle X, your immediate right is, well, hypotenuse. Hypotenuse, though, takes priority. So your immediate left, then, this is my adjacent. Okay? So cosine A over H. All right? The order is the ratio. So adjacent to the hypotenuse. Last one, we've already labeled everything. So tangent is the last one. Toa, the order is the order does it for you. So toa opposite over adjacent. Okay, tangent is my last one. Opposite over adjacent. And my suggestion is every time you start a new assignment or anything, put toa at the top. Okay, more times you write down, you're just going to remember it very, very quickly. Okay. So get to know those as we work throughout today.
tippy top of those papers and all that. Let's keep referring back to our three ratios. Good to know because we're going to use them quite a bit here. So that's going to be our first part. Can you write the ratio? If you can't write the ratio, you're kind of done for. But everybody can write the ratio. So let's do that first row. Okay. Let's go write the ratio standing at what angle here? What's our first angle we're going to stand at? It says stand at angle T. So we want to go write the first ratio sine of angle T. So go stand over here in this triangle at angle T. All right, we're standing at angle T. What's the sine ratio? Sine ratio is what? Opposite and hypotenuse, right? So go stand at angle T. Where's my hypotenuse at? Which side is my hypotenuse? 20. Standing at angle T, which of the 12 and 16 represents the opposite? Okay, 12, RG is, right? So you're standing at T, this is my opposite side, right? So that is my opposite. Okay, we're done. So let's write it up. So is it 12 over 20 or 20 over 12? Yep. Opposite over hypotenuse. Just look up there at the top. And typically we always reduce things down, don't we? So 12 over 20 reduces down to <coughs> what? Reduces by four down to our herd what? Three fifths. Yep, three fifths. Okay. As always, we always want to reduce things down if we can, and that does reduce down to three fifths. All right, that's not too crazy, was it? All right, let's go to the next ratio. What's the next ratio asking me to do? Cosine of angle T, right? So what's cosine need? Cosine needs the, okay, go back to angle T. You just told me I need the adjacent. So what size is my adjacent up here at T? 16. And the hypotenuse, right? Well, we got the hypotenuse. So 16 over 20 still reduces down, correctly. 4 over 5. And then lastly, go give me the other one. Tangent of T. What's the tangent ratio? Opposite over adjacent. So in this case it is 12 over 16. And that also keeps reducing down by 3 over 4. Alright, nothing crazy yet. We'll be crazy in a minute. Alright. Go give me the next row real quick. Go give me the what? Same ratios, but go stand at angle G. I'll give you a minute two on that. saying depending on where you're standing it's all relative. Now which label does not switch up on you? Yeah, hypotenuse never switches up because the hypotenuse is always across from the uh, right angle. So you're standing at G, my now opposite side is the 16 and now my adjacent side is 12. So if you didn't do that, fix it. Now standing angle G, my sine ratio is what to what? 16 to 20. And my cosine ratio is now what? 12 to 20. And what is that? 3 fifths. And my tangent ratio is now 16 to 12, which is 4 to 3. Correct. So it's all relative where you stand at that influences your opposite and adjacent. Hypotenuse is always hypotenuse. Okay, that's the first deal. If you can't write the ratio, you're done for, but everybody can write the ratio. 
which is going to carry us now into let's jump into these problems. All right, let's do this. Let's do this now. Question two. All righty. Let's go do the same thing. Go stand at the angle. 25 degrees. Is there anything special about 25? Not a special right, is it? There's only two special rights, 30, 60, and a 45. 25 is nothing special. So we always stand at the angle. I don't care if the variable is on the side. I don't care where the variable is at. We always stand at the angle. So we'll go stand at 25. Label out those two sides that are given to me. All right, what's that x represent? Opposite adjacent hypotenuse. OK, let's label that as the adjacent. And then what's the 7 represent? So just as I asked you last week, what were my sides? Long leg, short leg, hypotenuse. My new question to you is going to be is opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Label those out. Okay, based off of what you got labeled here, what are you going to go up there and look at? What ratio or sorry, what trig function are you going to use? Sine or cosine or the cosine? Because what do we have labeled? We have the adjacent thing. What's it going to be? So we are going to choose the, and you said the cosine function, right? Because what do we have labeled? We have labeled the, the hypotenuse. Do we have anything about the opposite side up there? Uh -uh. So we can only use what we have labeled. All right. So when I say write the equation, this is what it should look like. You just told me the cosine function, correct? So it's always the cosine of the angle you're standing at. We're standing at the 25 degrees. So just as we had it written up top there, cosine of 25 degrees is equal to, well, what's it say up top? Adjacent over hypotenuse. So equals adjacent was what? And what's the hypotenuse? So when I say write the equation, that's what I want to see. Okay. Second thing is, you've been solving the equation since what? Third, fourth, fifth grade, and then keep ramping up every year. And I know it's since been third grade because my daughter, she's in third grade and she's starting to solve the equations. So third, fourth, fifth, sixth, every year it gets a little tougher. Okay, now from here, pause so I need to write this down. How do you solve that for x? How would you get x by itself? It's the inverse of division. So how do you get rid of division of 2? Multiply both sides by 2. 2 is cancel, and 2 times 5 is. You do the exact same thing here. Who cares if it says cosine of 25? How do you get x by itself? How do you get rid of that division of 7? So let's do that. Let's multiply both sides by 7. And what's going to happen to these 7s? And you're going to now have x by itself, right? Now on the left hand side, we're kind of done for. We're going to have 7 times the cosine of 25 degrees. X is by itself. And we are good to go. This is what we call, right here on our new line, this is what we call, right off to the side here, we call this calculator ready form. You want to be in calculator ready form. X is by itself, all right? In SAT, we have a calculator test, we have a non calculator test. And you're going to have questions that are going to get you in the non calculator portion to make the choice. They're going to say, hey, what's the calculator ready form? Multiple choice, you're going to find one that looks like that, okay? So we want to get to that point. X is by itself, X is solved for, great. Now let's go click calculators, all right? So, everybody, what we want to now do is get ready to type in exactly what we have in our paper, exactly as is. So let me bring up my calculator now. All right, so let's type in 7. Now you don't need to type in the times, because if you just type in 7 cosine of uh, 25, 7 times 7 cosine, it means the same, same thing. So 7 cosine right there in kind of the middle top-ish part of your calculator, and then we just say it's 25, right? So 7 times the cosine of 25 should be kind of good form. You're not going to say close it, but then we hit enter. And let's see if you guys get the same answers here. 
All right, so what that means is if you got 6.3, cool, you're in the same mode as I am. If you did not get 6.3, which probably most of you did not, it means you're not all in the same mode. So let's fix your calculators now. Okay, so your guys' calculators. All right, over the years, you've got kind of the older models that require you to change the batteries every once in a while. And back when we used to back in the day, if you had to change the batteries, or if you had to recharge them, or you don't put your uh, sleeve back on here, and then you're, you're in your backpacks, and you just kind of do that. All right, or a buddy borrows it, or it's cloudy out, I don't know, sometimes. Every once in a while, the mode just gets changed for whatever reason. And you're checking your work, and you're like, I have no way to type this in correctly. I have no idea what's on right, but you're not getting the same answers. It's probably because the mode got changed. It just happens. This is how you change the mode. All right, let's pay attention here. You did not get this 6.3. Which calculator was it? Which calculator? Do I have one? Come on, you do. You got to be ready. You're not as good. All right. So, how do we get 6.3 correctly? Okay, on your calculator, top here where it says mode. Well, look at your calculator is in radians. Everybody's calculator defaults to radians. If you got did not get 6.3, so what you need to do is go down just a couple lines where you see radian and degree, and you have radians probably highlighted at the moment. So go down, for me, I had to click over to the right. You better hit enter. Hit enter such that now degrees is solid black, radians is no, no longer solid black. Now it should be set. Hit second uh, mode again to quit, go back to your screen, now retype that in. Now type in 7 cosine of 25. And you get 6.3. If you did not, this is the time right now to ask. Get all the calculator questions out of the way. Okay? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. We're going to have to give me some time on that one there. Hey, you know, the Casio one. So um, in the meanwhile, do that one. You don't have to worry about me on this one. So if for some reason you borrow one of mine but you did forget it, that sometimes happens, you don't have to worry about modes of this one. The scientific calculators, the default's always degree. You don't have to change, you don't have to worry about that one. But in your guys' graphing calculators, um, if it does get changed back, you gotta go mode. Alright. 6.3, what's the direction say to round to? Nearest mm -hmm. 10. So our default from pretty much this point on. The side length is usually nearest tenth, unless you have to say otherwise. That's usually our default for three. All right, 6.3, one down. Let's go to the next one there, boys and girls. Go stand at that angle, 65 degrees. <coughs> Label it up. What's that X represent? Opposite adjacent hypotenuse. What's the 11 represent? All right, based off of what you have labeled, opposite and adjacent, look at the top. So Katoa, sine, cosine, or tangent. Correct. So when we say tangent, what I am looking for for an equation is tangent of the angle you're standing at. So tangent of 65 degrees equals, it says Toa, opposite over adjacent. So in this instance, it's what? 11 over x or x over 11? x over 11. Monday when I touch base with you on a mini quiz, it's going to be the same format. One point for the equation. One point for the next line, the calculator ready form. How do I get x by itself? Multiply both sides by 11. That's going to get 11's cancel. And I'm going to have it now in calculator ready form. 11 times the tangent of and if you're sitting there going, how the hell did he get tangent? Why are they saying tangent? This is the time to ask me for clarification. I had somebody last period. They finally clicked, but they were just sitting there going, how is he saying tangent? This is the time to ask. Okay. Trick's pretty straightforward, but you can't ask. All right, go to your calc. Don't wait on me. 11. Tangent of, what is it? 65. Hit enter. Nearest tenth says 23.6. Okay, order does not matter. 
So what I mean by that is typically, again, formatting wise, we usually say 11 times the tangent 65, but you can flip it around. I always have a few people that want to kind of rewrite that and say tangent of 65 times 11. It's kind of weird and ugly, all right? So you're in the morning, but you know, um, we clean it up, all right? But if you want to write that, type it in just to show you. Type it in the reverse order for that real quick. You should still get, type it in, all right? Reverse the order, okay? You should still get what? 23.6, all right? If you're not getting 23.6, make sure you are doing it correctly there, okay? So what is it? Tangent of 65 times 11. The question is though, are you correctly using those parentheses? All right. If you're not using those parentheses, you're telling your calculator to do um, uh, the tangent of the angle 6,511, or you're telling your calculator to do 65 times 11, which is still not quite the same. Okay. You're getting some freaky answers there, aren't you? All right. So you better close those parentheses if you do something weird like that. So just do good form. Good habits here. 11 first times that tangent of sine or anything like that. Okay. When you get into some larger angles, that's going to be algebra 2 and 3 calculus. You get to some weird angles. We'll leave there yet, are we? All right. Let's go to the next one, everybody. Next one says 78 degrees. What do we got for the 11? Opposite the adjacent hypotenuse. What's the x? Opposite the adjacent. Holy crap. Opposite? Okay. Based off of opposite hypotenuse. Sine. So let's wrap the equation. Sine of 78 degrees equals what over what? Sounds good. Then on Monday, I'm going to give you the same thing, just to touch base, see how it tricks going. So this is going to be a three-pointer here. One for the equation, one for calculator ready, and now one for your answer. Give me the calculator ready line. Hopefully you've realized the pattern already going, right? Solve for x. What's it going to be in calculator ready form? 11 times sine of 78. Go to your calculator if you haven't done so yet. And 11 times the sine of 78. Somebody check me as well, but what? 10.8? Okay. Usually at this point, it's like, oh my god, Mr. Dress, shut up. Let's just do this finally. All right, go. Just do the next one real quick. Do the next one, number three, that first one there. Give me a minute to chew on that next one. Chew on that next one. Hold on just a second. Three, number three. Do you have anything on DDS to go? So that's what we're just just want to know what that is. So since I have nothing on that adjacent, what do we can't be two squares and come on the can't be squares and come on. Whereas I said opposite hypotenuse. That's what this is on. Gotcha. Okay. Good questions to ask there. What's the issue going on here? When you set up your equation just now, you should be using what? Sine, I believe. And uh, sine of 35 equals, now here's the issue. Where's that variable ending up at? 
the denominator, right? 7 over x. So the denominator ends up in one of three locations. Numerator, what we just saw, now the denominator. All right, so when that's the case, it's not going to be typed in as seven times because it's in the opposite of a different location, isn't it? All right, so let's use our equation skills. All right, let's get that x out of the denominator. We has to be in the numerator. Let's get that x out of the bottom. All right, we're going to do the same steps, though. you got to get out of the denominator. In order to get out of the denominator, we're going to multiply it by still that x. you got to get out of the bottom. If we get out of the bottom, we're going to multiply both sides by x. And what that's going to do for us is it's going to cancel it on the right. And it's going to move it up, move it over on the left there, and create <coughs> x times the sine of 35 equals 7. So what we've done here is got it out of the bottom grade, and we moved it over to the left, up in the numerator now. Cool. Now we create another new problem, though. But it's a better problem. Sine of 35 is just a number. So... It's just a number. How do you solve for x there? Divide, Divide by 2, right? So x times sine of 35. Sine is just a number. How do you get rid of multiplication? So you're going to divide both sides by the sine of 35. Sine is just a number. So we're going to divide both sides by the sine of 35. They're going to cancel. Okay. And on the right hand side now, you got 7 divided by, write that a little bit better, 7 divided by the sine of 35. That's my calculator ready form. Okay. That's what's going to happen whenever x is in the denominator. And now let's put our calculator and punch that in. Now, when you punch that in, because I've done it for so many years and I do it every once in a while myself, make sure when you hit 7 divided by, your screen, your calculator actually registers your division. Because every once in a while you know sometimes it doesn't register. And if you don't register division, your calculator is not going to catch it. It's going to do multiplication. And the number is going to look legit, but um, 7 divided by is what we want. And what is it? Sine of, what is it? 35? 35. And 12.2? Okay. You better be getting 12.2 then. All right. So, Variables only in one of three locations. We've just seen two of the three locations. In this instance, 7 divided by it gives me what? 12.2. Okay, one down. Let's go with the next one. Let's go stand at 42 degrees. Label that. What's the x represent? Opposite adjacent hypotenuse. And what's the uh, 13? All right, based off what you got, create me the equation. What are you going to choose? Sine, cosine, or tangent? All right, go right up the tangent ratio then, please. So the same thing should have been made on this one. And you're at the tangent ratio. Okay? You're going to have tangent of the angle, 42 degrees, is equal to opposite is of TOA opposite over adjacent. Variable again, back in the denominator. Okay. So in this case now, what we need to then do here is get the x out of the denominator by doing that same process every flipping time. Multiply x on both sides, and those x's are going to cancel, get in out of the bottom where we want it, don't want it. And over there on the other side, bits out up in the numerator. And now we want to divide both sides by that tangent of 42. And what you're going to end up with then is 13 divided by the tangent of 42. Go back to that calculator. And what is 13 divided by the tangent of 42? We always go with one decimal, one to the nearest tenth. That's what the directions usually say for the sides. 14.4. Okay. All right. Let's go 
wrote that last one if you haven't done so yet. Okay. So let's stay at that 27 and do that last one first. So what do we have here? Cosine, I believe. All right. And cosine of 27 equals adjacent. And there is that variable in the denominator. Now, just like I told you on special rights, I totally expect you, because of special rights, hopefully be able to see some of that shortcut where, hey, I know what the triangle is. I can do that in my head. I don't need to show you the equation right now. Same thing here. You realize those top ones that you just multiply, right? 7 times cosine of 35. Here on these bottom ones, what are we always typing it in as? 7 divided by, right? 13 divided by. What's always happening when that variable is in the denominator? What's going to happen on this one? It's going to be typed in as, if you keep remembering that, do I need to show that work every single time? No. Okay. I'm only going to call you on it if you get those wrong. Okay? So 6 divided by the cosine of 27. It's going to be true every single time when that variable is the denominator. And what is 6 divided by cosine of 27? 6.7, I think I heard. Yeah. Okay, 6.7. All right, let's flip it. we got a few more minutes left. Let's do the, let's skip over the next one. But let's go to that second line below there where it says the sine of, I think, 3 fifths. And go find me the other two ratios. That's a SAT problem. Okay. Now <clears throat> we're going to use our trig ratios that we've been doing, number five there, and find me the other two ratios. All right. This is a good old SAT problem. So knowing our trig ratios that we started with today, we can take our trig ratios and find me the other two now, knowing just one. Sketch me out the triangle that states, hey, if the sine ratio is three fifths. What's that triangle got to look like? So think about that. What type of triangle are we dealing with here? What type of triangle are we dealing with? I'm sorry? Uh, you're ahead of my game here, Alexis, but thank you on that. Alexis just told me we're at 3, 4, 5, and what does a 3, 4, 5 deal with? 60 degree angles? Right angles? Or right triangle, correct? Mm -hmm. So Alexis is already ahead of the game, and the end. X is my angle we're talking about here, okay? So where does that X go, gonna go? That's the angle, because that's the angle you're standing at. That's what they said to stand at. Where do you want to put that X at? The top angle or the bottom angle? Pick one. Bottom one I hear from Grant. So because Grant's saying the bottom one, I'm gonna go put it at the top one. It doesn't matter, right? What I'm telling you is it doesn't matter. Wherever you're standing at, it's all relative. So because Grant said the bottom one, I put the top one, I don't care. The reason why, again, I keep telling you it doesn't matter, what's the sine ratio tell me? It's opposite to hypotenuse, right? So wherever you're standing at, again, it doesn't matter. If I'm standing at the top, angle X, where's my hypotenuse at? Straight across, it's my opposite side, it's right here. That's going to be my length of 3. And my hypotenuse is always hypotenuse, right? So that's my 5. Now, Grant, he told me to go stand at the bottom angle, right? If he would have told me to do that and I listened to him, what would have happened here? That would, doesn't matter. If he, Grant did listen to himself and he did the bottom angle, we're still going to get the same answer in the long run. It doesn't matter. Now, that's the triangle that goes with that statement there. Now we can go find the other two ratios. What's the cosine ratio say we need? Cosine is what? Yeah, flip it to the other side or at the top of that page, right? So Katoa. We've got to have the adjacent side, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. 
Adjacent? We don't know though, do we? Adjacent is right here, but Alexis just told us we did know the adjacent sides. This is a three, Alexis, three, four, five. If it's not a three, four, five, it's a th something else. How would, well can we find that? Good old Bagram theorem. It's going to keep coming back into play. Because we're going to see, I think, more work on uh, Thursday, I believe. And we'll have some more work on these Thursdays where it's not a nice three, four, five. Don't ever forget about your Pythagorean theorem. As Alexis pointed that out to us, this is our good old three, four, five. So knowing that, we can easily find that. So what's the cosine ratio? The cosine ratio is adjacent to hypotenuse. So this is my SAT question. This is a grid response from the bubble ones that I've done with you. This is that four slash five. What's my tangent ratio? It's the, it's the toe apart, right? Opposite and adjacent. Right. Uh, opposite and adjacent. So I heard three over four. Okay. That is absolutely what the SAT will go with. Last one there for our time sake, number six. Same thing, it's an SAT one multiple choice. Which of these are equivalent to the cosine of 35? First thing we have to figure out is, well, what the heck is cosine of 35? So go stand at 35. Write the cosine ratio for 35. Okay, again, cosine ratio, gotta think what cosine is. Cosine is adjacent to so when we go stand at 35, label that adjacent, that's x, z, and label the hypotenuse, which is y, z. So I'm trying to figure out which of the, my four multiple choice options is that same ratio. Now, just for heads up, never stand at the right angle. Okay, you never stand at the right angle. Which of those are utilizing the right angle? A, B, C, or D? D. Scratch it out. It's never going to be the right angle. So look at those options then that remain. Which one of those has that same ratio set up? A, B, or C? So I hear B. All right. Let's go check out B. Let's see if it gives me that same ratio. So if I could go stand at angle Y. Okay, that's what B says to do. Go stand at Y and this is write the sine ratio. So now we're thinking sine. Go back if you need to the other page. Sine is what? Opposite okay. hypotenuse. Okay, opposite hypotenuse. Let's do opposite hypotenuse. Standing at Y. Opposite. Okay, hypotenuse is hypotenuse. Well, that looks pretty nice. Opposite. Hypotenuse is hypotenuse, isn't it? Does that match up? <coughs> so we're good to go. Same can be the other ones, then there's only one choice, multiple choice. Alright, that's where we'll pause it for time's sake. We'll come back tomorrow and use those other ones kind of as a warm-up. Back in like preschool and kindergarten, the teachers always ask you, hey, what are you gonna be when you grow up? <coughs> what are you gonna be when you grow up? Bet that? Bet that? Then you have idea. You don't know yet? Fair enough. Alright, what are you gonna do when you grow up?